Hi, we are back for day two on our intermolecular forces. So we're going to pick up right where we left off um, with the van der Waals. We're going to go with its um, next intermolecular force, which are London dispersion. These forces were first proposed by London Fritz in about 1930, who was a German American physicist. And it's based on the motion of electrons in an atom or in a molecule. Um, that can sometimes cause instantaneous or momentary dipoles. So what happens is your electrons are constantly, constantly moving. They are never stationary. And at any point in time, because they move randomly, they can gather to one side of a molecule. So if they all gather to one side, that makes this side slightly negative and the other side slightly positive. That creates that instantaneous dipole moment where you have a negative on one side of the molecule and a positive on the other. And then because electrons repel each other, that'll cause an instantaneous dipole moment in an adjacent molecule because you've got all the negatives here, gonna repel all the negatives on this side to the other side of an adjacent molecule. So this can then kind of trigger almost like a chain reaction um, and instantaneous dipole moments throughout the whole compound that you're talking about. These are significant, again, only when your molecules are very close together. So you should know what states of matter we're talking about here. And the strength of the London dispersions will depend on how easily the, the charge distribution can be distorted. So how easily those electrons can move. We call this polarizability. So the easier it is, the more polarizable that molecule it is. Larger molecules tend to have this ability much easier than smaller molecules because the electrons are more spread out and they're more far they're farther from the nucleus. So the farther they are, the easier they are to move. And this will then cause stronger le London dispersions um, in those larger molecules. So answer these two questions. In what state of matter are London dispersion forces most significant and what types of molecules can have London dispersion interactions? For nonpolar and polar molecules, all of them will exhibit London dispersion. So this is different than the other two forces that we were talking about, the ion dipole, the dipole dipole, and the hydrogen bonds, because those all depended on the molecules being polar. These ones don't have to be polar, it can be for any molecule. So oil can be um, one of our nonpolar molecules that will exhibit London dispersion forces. And they account for more intermolecular attractions than Dispersion forces often account for more intermolecular, intermolecular attractions than in polar molecules than dipole-dipole do themselves because it can happen in anything and it can happen at any um, moment in time. So these London dispersions are pretty important. When we're talking about London dispersion, there's two generalizations that exist. So if we're talking or trying to compare two molecules that have an equal weight and about the same shape, then their London dispersion forces are going to be equal. And if there's any difference in those forces, that's usually due to the um, polarity of the substance. So something that's more polar will have more London dispersion forces. The second generalization is if we're talking about molecules or comparing molecules that have different molecular weights or shapes. So if they have different different shapes or weights, then the London dispersions will be different as well. So the more massive the molecule is, the stronger that attraction will be. So these are some final questions that I want you to think about when we're um, talking about different intermolecular forces. How would life be different if these didn't exist? How do these forces explain why some substances are solids, liquids, or gases at the same temperature? Why do you think I have told you that kinetic molecular theory and intermolecular forces are going to be your two main ideas in chemistry? And what questions do you still have for me? So take a moment um, and do some additional Googling if you need to. Answer those questions in our Google Classroom so that you have a chance for me to respond and to still interact like we are in a normal classroom. But we're